Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Kira McGran and I'm a queer cyborg game designer living in Columbus, Ohio. And I wanted to make a follow-up video to my uh, previous video about women designed games. And in this one I want to talk about uh, playing marginalized characters uh, versus playing a marginalized designer's game. I feel super weird today. I am trying to withdraw from this medication, venlafaxin, for my, uh, that I take during the day for my fibromyalgia. And, uh, wow, it's been two weeks and it's basically makes me feel dizzy all day, like 24 hours of the most drunk dizzy you can possibly feel. So I can only do a few things. I put on some makeup, I'm gonna make this video. That's my goal today. So after my last video about games designed by women being only for women, um, obviously they're not, that's what my video is about, check it out, I'll link it below. Um, some people on social media reply to it, it's mostly dudes, um, and they have expressed to me that they're worried about playing marginalized characters, like role-playing those characters, um, and doing it wrong. Like maybe being at a table of all queer people and role-playing a queer person wrong somehow, like making some kind of social mistake about that social group. And, um, you know, that could be any marginalized group, right? In my video, I was talking about women and queer women, because that's me. But it could also be, you know, someone who's disabled, which I guess I fit into that category now too with my fibromyalgia. Um, or, you know, of a different race, marginalized race in the U.S., um, like anyone who isn't white. Um, you know, or, or other gender identifiers, if you're trans, for example. And so, um... You know, I think there's a difference between playing games written by marginalized people versus role-playing marginalized characters. So in the first example, you know, just because I am a queer woman, that doesn't mean my game is necessarily going to feature queer lady characters, right? So my game could be about anything. It could be about football players who are dudes. <laughs> like, you know, it doesn't have to be about me, it's fiction. Um, but you know, a lot of my games are about things I care about, so they are relevant to my gender and all of that. Uh, so, you know, if, I guess focusing on role-playing marginalized characters, um, please, please do this. Uh, especially, you know, if you're white, if you're a dude. You're playing, you want to play marginalized characters because they're humans just like you. <laughs> uh, you know, they're people and you want to focus on playing them with empathy. You're just playing another human just within a specific context. You're playing a different race or a different gender, so, you know, no one's have no one has the lived experience of like talking to dragons for example <laughs> so um but we're still able to imagine that in tabletop role playing games so you know taking the leap to playing someone who's a different race than you or a different gender than you shouldn't be that huge use your imagination use your empathy and as with all things privilege Get ready to make mistakes and apologize. Um, I do this all the time. I'm white. Um, I, you know, if I'm playing someone of another race, which I like to do, I think it's important um, to, as far as representation and as far as like me being able to learn things <laughs> about other people and other races, um, you know, just get ready to make a mistake. <laughs> and if you do, just apologize. I mean, you can prompt a did I mess this up type of question and then listen genuinely and learn from other people at the table about what you might know, might not know about that marginalized group. Um, so I usually do this, uh, like in my games, if I'm role playing a marginalized character, I would do this at the table if it's suddenly quiet or after I say something 
or if someone looks uncomfortable, or if multiple people look uncomfortable, especially if they are part of that marginalized group, um, just say, oh hey, did I say something that was wrong? Um, and do it genuinely, and with the intention to learn, and apologize for your mistake, and you've learned something new. Voila! That's how we get better at having privilege. <laughs> and you can teach that to other people who are privileged. Um, and then there's some other, there's some tools you can learn at the table too, uh, or tools you can use at the table to gain trust among everyone you're playing with. Um, even if it's with strangers at a game convention, for example, you could use the X card, which I will also link to below. Um, it's basically allows, it, it's a safety mechanic that allows you to discuss different boundaries that people might have at the table. Um, and if something comes up, you can simply point to the card and, and say X. Also, at the beginning of the game, it kind of allows people to start thinking like, oh, I need to be aware of other people's boundaries at the table. That's something I need to think about. So even just having it there lets people kind of uh, start thinking about that. <laughs> Sorry, my brain is weird today. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if you're a game designer who is part of a marginalized group, uh, a lot of the times, most of the time, I mean, I don't actually think I've ever played a game that was designed by a person who was part of a marginalized group that was like, only people of my marginalized group can play this game. I don't want any white people or any men playing this game. It is only for this group. Um, usually these games are designed to teach outside of that group, you know? I mean, I am a queer woman and I want straight people to play my lesbian snake game, A Cozy Den, and I purposely put stuff in there so that if you are straight and maybe don't understand some of the queer terminology, I am like teaching you queer terminology, which is super cool. You can learn from my game if you're not queer. <laughs> so you know, you can learn what footch is. You, maybe you've seen that before and been like, what the hell does this term mean? Well, there you go, play my game. Um, so, you know, I expect people who aren't lesbians or snake lovers to play my game, right? I want them to. So if you're a little nervous about role-playing a marginalized character uh, in a tabletop role-playing game, I would say try some of these techniques out. Um, get ready to make mistakes, but also get ready to learn things. Um, and remember to play with empathy and uh, you'll have I bet a good time. So uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, I'm trying to grow my channel and if I can get to 100 subscriptions, some cool things happen that I can't remember what they are, but they're cool. Um, and uh, let me know below uh, in the comments any stories of times that you've played marginalized characters. Um, or if you are a marginalized part of a marginalized group as a human <laughs> and your experience playing um with you know men or white people that was weird or uncomfortable or totally great and a teaching or learning experience for both sides all right um thanks so much for watching i'll catch you later